Hello, uh, welcome to my Marxism, Leninism, Maoism uh, course introduction. I'm going to make a few statements um, on what I won't talk about, and then I'll talk about Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, uh, and why it's the most uh, apt revolutionary ideology we have today. Um, there are two things I won't talk about. Um, the two things primarily are Trotskyism and civil society. Uh, I think they are uh, completely useless, but if you're a Trotskyist, then go ahead and use uh, whatever you find useful and discard the rest. Um, and the reason why I won't uh, talk about Trotskyism is because it goes from pre-Leninism, uh, which you can see among certain Trotskyist groups. Um, they're not very thoroughgoing Leninists. There's an overemphasis on social democracy, recreating social democracy. Um, and basically, it's like uh, 1902 um, uh, international members, and it's really bad, um, but that's fine. Uh, plenty of the left is really bad, but I'm not going to talk about it because it's, it has little to no interest. Um, and then there's uh, Lenin, uh, Trotskyists who go to the verge of Lenin, um, or... Uh, sorry, go to the verge of Stalin. Um, these are primarily considered Mar uh, Marcius, primarily. Um, yeah, you'd be hard pressed to find a meaningful distinction between uh, their form of Marcism slash influenced by Trotskyism and quote unquote Stalinism. And so I just have no interest in discussing that. I don't think it's helpful. If you think it's helpful, then you should uh, make a video on it and share your views. Um, I don't think it's helpful at all. So I'm going to stick with Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Um, and the Maoism has serious questions, but I think it's valuable in and of itself. Um, the other reason I won't talk about Trotskyism is because they haven't really made a meaningful contribution uh, to the revolution, uh, to any revolution, in fact. Um, and this may come as a shock and this may uh, leave you aghast because don't you know Trotsky was the Red Army and he would have made us all proletarian communists if he would have won instead of Stalin. I have no interest in that. I, I don't care. Um, uh, Cuba, Laos, North Korea, China, um, Cambodia, Vietnam, um, you know, you name it. Um, the Trotskyists uh, occasionally provide a somewhat supportive role, um, but generally their movement is dead, um, and uh, I have no interest in it at all. Um, if you have interest in it, again, I highly encourage you to uh, create your own video, um, and you know you can condemn me or not. I I don't really care, and I almost certainly will not respond to you um, because I don't care. Um, but I don't feel there's anything useful in Trotskyism um, except where it overlaps with Marxism, Leninism. So that being said, I'm not going to talk about Trotskyism. Don't ask me to talk about Trotskyism. I'm not interested in talking about Trotskyism. Um, I'm also not interested in talking about civil society. Um, this entire concept is generally pushed by Western Marxists uh, to account for their failure of revolution. Um, and it's meaningless. Um, all society is based on class antagonisms, and it ultimately reduces to the, this point of class antagonism. Uh, just uh, four really cl clear and quick examples. Um, if you open a taco stand, you need permits uh, from the state, and so you ultimately have to be in compliance with the state. I mean, you can run a guerrilla taco stand if you want, um, but if you do, um, you can expect the state, uh, if your guerrilla taco stand is successful enough, to shut it down or make you go into compliance with the state. This is clear uh, market, arguably civil society. Even so, um, you have punk rock house shows. This is example number two. You have punk rock house shows, um, and you have a venue that depends on personal property guarded by the state. Now you can say, well, we're, we're more anarchists than you are, and we're going to have a, a, an abandoned building. We're going to do punk rock shows in it. That's fine. Um, ultimately, you uh, 
the the state can intervene when it wishes, and it does frequently. Um, it, you know, it's punk rock. It, it's got its edge, and it's kind of loud. So you know, whatever. Um, so you can you can argue this, um, but it all depends on the the wherewithal of the state. This art, food. Um, the other thing is software is copyrighted, and that entails the possibility of state intervention. While certainly um, the state generally doesn't care that you're downloading games illegally, um, if if it does, you will uh, get arrested, uh, charged, fined, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, however, there is open source software, which itself is protected by particular licensing uh, licenses, um, which the state says so, and it gives you these open source licenses um, so that it can adjudicate what is open source and what is not. So that's civil society. Um, it's not the entirety of civil society, but this isn't the notion that you can build a civil society movement um, free of state intervention is naive at best, and I think is derived um, from the 1960s and 70s and their absolute failure of Western Marxists um, in every, pretty much every way, shape, and form. So I'm not going to talk about civil society. The texts won't get into civil society. And generally, I think that um, the contribution of talking of civil society um, is basically uh, a failure, an absolute and utter failure. However, if you want to talk about civil society and you think that that's a good addition, go ahead. Um, make a, a video saying how I'm wrong. I, I probably won't respond to you either um, because I have no interest in that. In any case, um, I'm going to start uh, start uh, explaining Marxism, Leninism, Maoism uh, just in, as a general proposition.